he just said sit down so I sat down and did a couple different tests on me and he says you failed I says no I didn't I says I'm fine you just don't know what you're doing <laughs> well he pulled my husband out of the room and he says your wife needs more testing okay do you guys know what the doctor's name that prescribed eyeglasses you know what they're called optometrist he does the glasses so that was the first doctor that said I filled my eye exam he said there's a part of your eye it's called the optic nerve has anybody heard of that yes do you guys know how important an optic nerve is the optic nerve is the window to your overall health of your body well he told me mine was swollen I didn't think anything of it because I'm fine. Remember, I'm fine. Well, he says, uh, I have an appointment with you with your doctor, my friend, the next day, you be there. I told him, I says, no, I'm not being there. I got a class to teach. I'm not taking a day off. And he literally told my husband she couldn't be there. So the next day, he drove me to my appointment. And I am with my cocky attitude. And, uh, the doctor ran tests on me. They did a field of vision screening. What it was, it's a box with little lights, white lights. The room is pitch dark. And they have you hold this buzzer, like a clicker. So as you're looking straight, you would see lights and you would flash whenever you'd see lights. Took the test twice, failed it. Still told them, you're wrong, I pass everything. Well, they told me, it's time for you to get a CAT scan. Has anybody ever had a CAT scan done? Was it painful? Yeah. What did you have done? Well, no, actually, well, it was like, our CAT scans were always up in like the basement. Kind of, yeah. Well, like, I don't know, I was in there for a while. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have a CAT scan? Was it painful? No. Was your CAT scan? A CAT scan just takes a basic image of a part of your body that you're having uh, uh, pictured. Okay, well, they said come back after lunch and we'll go over your results. Came back after lunch, walked into the room, still had my cocky attitude, told the doctors, I don't know what you guys are doing here, you're wasting your time and my time. They said, uh, Jenny, sit down. So I sat down and they walked over and turned on that white box, you know where they look at the x-ray, popped it up and they said, this is you, you have a brain mass. How would you feel if somebody told you you had a brain mass? November 18th, my world's. I walked out of the office, shake in my hand, thinking, can't be me. They said, well, what you've got to do now is we're taking you, and we have an appointment scheduled to Walter Reed Medical Army Center at CDC. That's the big medical hospital all the wounded troops from Afghanistan and Iraq get sent to over there they said go over there we're gonna do some more tests on you we'll see what's going on so went there my doctors couldn't figure out what the big to do was you know asked me all the questions checked my reflexes and he says oh by the way you've got a serious problem here are you okay and I'm like well I'm fine well they showed me an MRI an MRI, they put you in a tube, it's a lot of clicking noises because it's done in magnetic imaging. And uh, I call this my bad boy. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody see that? Right here, right here in my head. It compressed my brain down. Cerebral fluid was not moving in my head. So I felt like I was living in a fog, literally. Nothing computed. I had headaches, constant headache, which I thought was normal. This type of tumor is called a meningioma. The outside of your brain, this covering is called meninges. Has anybody ever heard that before? Yes? Okay. Well, 
Women are more susceptible to meningiomas than men are. They don't know why, they think it has to do with estrogen. But they're slow growing, okay? So, I asked the doctors, I says, well, how big do you think it is? They says, well, we're not exactly sure, but by our best estimates, it's at least the size of a softball. I'm like, okay. Well, they said, before you do anything or before we can do anything, you have two options. I says, okay, just tell me what's going on. They says, well, it was nice knowing you. You have six months to live, live your life. Have fun and be done with it. That was not a very happy thought. Second one was, well, we can attempt surgery. We'll give you about a 30% chance of having some type of life. Come back in a week and tell us what you want to do. Because working with the neural part of your body, they will not give you instant surgery tomorrow. Well, what would you guys have done? Anybody have any? Surgery would have done. Chance? Anybody would have said, have a good life? I had one doctor that told me that. Okay, just take your six months. You'll be fine. I thought, right, okay. So, I decided to take the surgery route. Well, guess what? Not so easy. They says, when you come back for surgery, your funeral. I said, what? They said, yeah, we want all of your things together for your funeral. We want to know where you want to be buried at, your obituary, everything laid out in front of us because you're not going to look it. Isn't that nice? Having doctors tell you this before you get ready for the big surgery? So I said, okay. Well, December 16, 2003 rolled around. That was my surgery first part of the surgery, they were going into my femoral artery, going with the wire up through my arteries to my brain. What they were going to do is the doctor wanted to put five clips around this tumor to prevent blood loss when they had me opened up to prevent swelling. I thought, well, that's easy. We can do that. Well, the surgery came. They were in my brain the first time for six hours. The doctor only got two clips on my tumor. It was that big. So he came out of surgery and told my husband, you know what, we just should stop surgery right now because she's not going to make it. We'll just call it good. And they said, no, you can't. You've already started the procedure. You have to continue. So, okay. Next morning, got over to Walter Reed, got me sedated. You know, they put the IVs in, put you have the medicine. How many's had surgery? Okay, you know what it's like. Kind of feeling nervous, antsy, <coughs> but you're ready. Well, got in there for surgery. Um, they had me in this special chair because they were gonna have to crack my skull open from ear to ear. Because they had to peel down my scalp to expose my skull. Well, at 8.46 a.m., I died. I flatlined. the room was white. I don't know how many people are here religious, but we can't talk religion, but how many of you guys have heard of people having out-of-body experiences during surgery? It happened to me. I watched the doctors work on me. They had me pronounced dead for four minutes. While I was out of my body experience, I had two grandmas that came to me Everything's going to be okay. It's not your turn. Time to die. You have a mission on life to finish, and you need to go finish it. Well, I argued with them. I said, no, I'm done. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. They said, no, we're not taking you. You've got two kids to raise. You made a promise you were going to do teaching. You've got to get back out there. Um, I says, okay, well, if it's not me that you're going to come and take to heaven, who are you taking? He says, he says go enjoy your family. You might not have some people too long in your life. Go enjoy them. I thought, okay. Well, that part ended. Uh, the doctor revived me. 
and um, two days later they woke me up. Okay, and remember nobody's supposed to be moving, but while I was on the operating room table, I had three blood clots. You know what blood clots are called there in your brain? Aneurysm. Not aneurysm, aneurysms are the blooming of the oh. bulging of the blood vessels. Thank you. Get louder. Stroke. Stroke. I had three small strokes. around and you can see these three little white dots are where the strokes were at. Okay. Well, my other picture is the top view of the brain tumor. Okay. Take a softball. How big is a softball, ladies? Play softball. Okay, take another softball, cut that in half, and put it on the hole. How big are you? Okay, right now we're talking three pounds. Do you know how much your brain weighs? A woman's eight pounds, a man is nine, nine to ten. Okay? Right now that's what's in my head. I didn't realize how serious it was at the time. Okay. As they get into the resection of the brain tumor, think of this thing sitting here. Well, in your, in your brain, your cerebral fluid moves one way. Well, as it got to the brain tumor, it resected, it took the blood and moved it a different way. The doctors had not seen that happen before. They were stumped. So they called a couple of uh, big universities that do specific neuro in my case, after like a surgery or a coma, they help you get all your strength back and all your range of motion in your body. They do. I have pictures here. You'll see me on parallel bar bars, and you'll see my physical therapist working with me. Remember those belts the nursing school came over, Clarkson came over? You'll see my gait belt on me. You're more than welcome to look through my pictures here to see. I had physical therapy working. Anybody know what OT is? Occupational therapy? You know what OT does? They help you eat, learn how to hold on to your spoon, dress you. When I was in bed and I couldn't move, I had to have people in the bed back. I had orderlies that were males dress me, put bra on, which guys don't put good bras on. <laughs> I'll tell you. But uh, you just have to know that there are people doing their job and that. Uh, speech therapy, I did not have to have speech therapy because I could still talk. Well, um, as the meeting continued, here, she's going home in a wheelchair. They had me fitted for a wheelchair. How would that sit right with you? I looked at those doctors. laughed at me. They literally laughed at me. So I had my work cut out for me. My body slowly started to wake up. Think about agonizing, you know, your hand or your leg falls asleep and it's a piercing, piercing pins and needles. That's what it was like for my limbs to come back from a stroke. Well, this hand slowly started to wake up. I would take little bottles of water that they'd give me on my milk tray party bottle of water because you live on it. Thank you. I would put it in my hand. And exercises are called range of motion. I would start wiggling my arms. Because the more you get your neurons moved and connected up here, guess what's working? Your brain's going to be coming back alive again. So that's what I would do. Every time I was in that bed at night, I was moving something get me back and going. Well, after 11 weeks of being in a rehab hospital and learning how to walk again, it was a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's all baby steps. 
February 21st, 2004, I walked out of that hospital when they told me I couldn't have another child. And I took a look at those doctors and I told them that I couldn't do well. So, I'm in the medical books of Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, having been a syndrome on the East Coast, divided in two sections, East and West Coast. So I have the honor of the biggest one on the East Coast. So, um, that was an exciting experience. 